Let's dive a bit deeper into the fascinating world of speech patterns and their relationship to sexual orientation. The concept of a gay voice has been a topic of interest and sometimes controversy for many years. It's important to approach this subject with sensitivity and an understanding that no single characteristic defines a person's sexuality. However, the scientific research in this area provides some intriguing insights into how speech patterns can correlate with sexual orientation. Let's start by exploring the historical context of this phenomenon, the idea of a distinct gay voice voice gained prominence in popular culture during the mid-20th century, coinciding with increased visibility of LGBTQ plus individuals in media and society. This led to both stereotyping and genuine curiosity about whether there were measurable differences in speech patterns between gay and straight individuals. One of the earliest scientific studies on this topic was conducted in the 1980s by linguist David Crystal. He noted that some gay men seem to use more varied intonation patterns than their straight counterparts. This observation sparked a wave of research research that continues to this day. It's crucial to emphasize that these studies focus on averages and trends, not absolute rules. There's an enormous diversity within both gay and straight communities, and individual voices can vary widely. Now let's delve deeper into some of the specific vocal characteristics that researchers have studied. 1. Pitch variation. As mentioned earlier, studies have consistently found that gay men tend to use a wider pitch range when speaking. This doesn't necessarily mean their voices are higher overall, but rather that they move between high and low pitches more frequently frequently and dramatically. This can give their speech a more dynamic and expressive quality. 2. Vowel pronunciation. Gay men often elongate certain vowel sounds, particularly A, I, and U. This can contribute to a perceived drawl or more precise articulation. For example, the word cat might be pronounced more like at 3. Sibilant S. The tendency for some gay men to prolong S sounds has been widely noted. This isn't a lisp which involves mispronunciation, but rather a longer, more pronounced S sound. Think of the difference between a quick S in fast and a drawn-out S in Yes. 4. Overall articulation. Studies have found that gay men often articulate more clearly and precisely than straight men. This might involve more distinct pronunciation of consonants and clearer separation between words. 5. Voice quality. Some research has suggested that gay men are more likely to use what linguists call breathy voice quality, where more air passes through the vocal cords during speech. It's fascinating to consider why these differences might exist. One theory is that they're a form of overt prestige, a way for gay men to subtly signal their identity to others in the know. This could be particularly important in contexts where being openly gay might be risky or unwelcome. Another theory relates to the concept of the gay community of practice. This suggests that gay men might adopt certain speech patterns as a way of identifying with and showing belonging to the gay community. It's similar to how people might adopt the accent or slang of a new place they move to. It's also worth noting that these speech patterns aren't fixed. As mentioned earlier, both gay and straight men can modulate their voices depending on the social context. This ability to code switch demonstrates the flexibility of our speech patterns and how we use them to navigate different social situations. The development of these speech patterns in individuals is another area of interest. Some researchers have suggested that they might begin to emerge in adolescence as young gay men start to explore and assert their identity. The study of gay YouTubers becoming more gay sounding after coming out supports this idea of speech patterns evolving with identity. However, it's crucial to remember that not all gay men adopt these speech patterns and some straight men naturally speak in ways that might be perceived as gay. This highlights the danger of making assumptions about someone's sexuality based solely on their voice. Let's also consider the broader societal implications of this research. While it's scientifically interesting, the idea of a gay voice has sometimes been used to discriminate against or stereotype. Some studies have suggested that lesbians might use lower pitch and less pitch variation than straight women. But these findings are far from conclusive. The relative lack of research on lesbian voices might reflect the fact that female speech patterns are generally more varied and flexible in many cultures making differences less noticeable. It could also be due to the historical invisibility of lesbian identities in many societies. As for other identities within the LGBTQ plus spectrum, research is even more limited. There's a growing interest in studying the speech patterns of transgender individuals, particularly how voice training can help trans people achieve a voice that aligns with their gender identity. However, bisexual, non-binary, and other queer identities remain understudied in terms of speech patterns. It's also worth considering how these speech patterns might vary across cultures and languages. Most of the 
research has been conducted in English-speaking countries, but studies in other languages have found similar patterns. This suggests that while the specific manifestations might differ, the underlying tendencies could be more universal. As we look to the future, it's likely that research in this area will continue to evolve. Advances in technology, such as machine learning algorithms that can analyze speech patterns, might provide new insights. However, it will be crucial to approach this research ethically, ensuring that it respects individuals' privacy and doesn't contribute to harmful stereotyping. In conclusion, while there's scientific evidence for certain speech patterns being more common among gay men, it's essential to approach this topic with nuance. Our voices are just one part of our complex identities, influenced by a multitude of factors including but not limited to our sexuality. The diversity of human expression means that no single characteristic can definitively indicate someone's sexual orientation. Rather than using this research to make assumptions about individuals, we can appreciate it as a fascinating window into the complex interplay between language, identity, and society. It reminds us of the rich diversity of human expression and the myriad ways we communicate who we are to the world.